On today's episode, we're diving into a space story packed with drama, determination, and some bold decisions. The Boeing Starliner is once again at the center of attention. Yes, the same spacecraft that gave NASA quite a few sleepless nights. Meanwhile, India continues to rise as a formidable space power, making strides toward both the Moon and Mars. And if that wasn't enough, the U.S. Space Force is now turning to artificial intelligence to shape its future operations. But for now, let's talk about a return that captured imaginations around the world, the homecoming of NASA astronauts Butch and Sonny. Last week, after a long and unpredictable journey, the two astronauts made their way back to Earth, welcomed not by crowds or flashing cameras, but by a stunning scene that seemed almost surreal. A pod of playful dolphins danced around their recovery vessel under a canopy of golden sunlight, as the calm ocean sparkled like a mirror of the sky. It was the kind of cinematic moment you'd expect to see in a sci-fi movie finale, but it was very real, a peaceful conclusion to what had been a chaotic and extended space mission. Their safe return brought a collective sigh of relief from NASA officials and space enthusiasts around the world. But it also raised a pressing question that demanded immediate answers. What exactly went wrong with the Boeing Starliner capsule that kept Butch and Sonny stuck in orbit for nine months? What started as a routine test flight turned into one of the most complicated astronaut recovery efforts in recent memory. Now, with both astronauts safely back on Earth, NASA is shifting its focus from celebration to investigation. And here's where things get even more interesting. Despite all the problems, setbacks, and criticism surrounding the Starliner, NASA is already talking about putting it back into action. Yes, you heard that right. Even with everything that went sideways during the last mission, NASA officials are signaling that they're ready to give the Boeing Starliner another shot, and possibly sooner than anyone expected. A new test flight to the International Space Station could happen later this year, and it might include crew members on board. That's still undecided, but what is clear is NASA's determination to get Starliner up and running as a reliable part of its transportation fleet. Barely a moment had passed after Butch and Sonny touched down before NASA's commercial crew program manager, Steve Stitch, began sketching out plans for the spacecraft's future. Stitch was already in talks with Boeing engineers, discussing what a new Starliner test flight might look like and how soon it could be ready. Whether or not astronauts will be aboard that next flight remains to be seen. But one thing is certain. NASA wants Starliner flying again, and flying well. Now, to really understand how we ended up in this situation, let's rewind to when all the trouble started. When Butch and Sonny first approached the International Space Station back in June of the previous year, the Starliner spacecraft encountered two major technical problems that could have spelled disaster. The first was a helium leak. While this kind of leak isn't unheard of in space flight, it's certainly not something you want to happen, especially during a high-stakes mission. Helium is essential for keeping the propulsion system pressurized. Without it, the spacecraft's engines can't function properly, and that's a serious problem when you're trying to dock with a space station or return to Earth. The second issue was even more concerning a failure in the maneuvering thrusters. These are small but critical engines that help the spacecraft fine-tune its position and speed, especially during docking. Out of the 28 reaction control thrusters on board the Starliner, five failed right when they were needed most. This kind of malfunction could have made it impossible for the spacecraft to safely connect with the ISS. Fortunately, the team at Boeing was able to bring four of those malfunctioning thrusters back online, just enough to complete the maneuver. But while this move helped Butch and Sonny reach their destination safely, it also cast a long shadow over the return trip. Would the thrusters work again? Could Starliner be trusted to bring the crew home? That uncertainty forced NASA and Boeing to carry out extensive testing of the Starliner's propulsion and thruster systems, both in space and on the ground. Over the course of several weeks, engineers studied the behavior of the thrusters, running diagnostics, simulations, and physical tests to pinpoint the root cause. Eventually, they discovered that the doghouse modules, the sections of the spacecraft where the thrusters are housed, were overheating. This overheating wasn't expected and hadn't been fully accounted for in earlier designs. What made the situation worse was that the intense heat was causing Teflon seals inside the doghouses to expand. These seals are designed to maintain airtight integrity under normal conditions. But when they got too hot, they swelled beyond their intended size, which interfered with their ability to close properly. This led to erratic behavior in the thruster system. The spacecraft's guidance computer started receiving faulty signals because the thrusters weren't responding as expected. That kind of software confusion in space is a recipe for serious trouble. Even though engineers had finally identified the immediate cause of the problem, they couldn't explain why the modules were overheating in the first place. 
nor could they offer a reliable fix to prevent the same thing from happening again. Faced with this uncertainty, NASA had to make a tough call. They decided it was too risky to attempt a crewed return flight in the Starliner. Instead, the capsule was sent back to Earth without any astronauts on board. This left Butch and Sonny stranded aboard the ISS, effectively without a ride home. Eventually, a different spacecraft was used to bring them back safely, but the ordeal left a lot of unanswered questions, and serious concerns about Boeing's design. Now, with those two astronauts finally back on solid ground, NASA wants to try the Starliner again. Except this time they're aiming to do it right. Earlier this month, on March 8, Steve Stitch gave a detailed update to reporters. He said NASA and Boeing had made, in his words, good progress on understanding and fixing the problems seen during the last mission. According to Stitch, about 70% of the anomalies encountered during Butch and Sonny's flight had been addressed. However, the propulsion system issues, specifically the overheating and thruster malfunctions, were still under investigation. More testing would be necessary before moving forward with another flight. Ten days later, on March 18, Stitch held another press briefing. He emphasized that engineers were still hard at work inspecting every part of the Starliner's helium and propulsion systems. Boeing was reportedly developing new types of seals to replace the faulty ones from the last mission. However, Stitch admitted this solution might be treating the symptom rather than the underlying cause. When asked about the overheating problem specifically, Stitch explained that NASA and Boeing were exploring changes to how the spacecraft heats and fires its thrusters. These modifications could help reduce the thermal buildup in the doghouse modules. And here's the kicker. They want to test these changes on the next Starliner flight, which could be the final test before the spacecraft is cleared for regular crew missions. That means the upcoming flight is going to be critical. It won't just be another test, it will be a proving ground for everything Boeing and NASA have learned so far. If all goes well, the next flight after that could carry a full crew of four astronauts or even more. The Starliner is theoretically capable of carrying up to seven people at once. But before it gets anywhere near that level of operation, NASA needs proof that the vehicle can safely and reliably do the job. So far, the tentative plan is to continue testing throughout the summer, with the next major launch window opening no earlier than fall 2025. So now the big question is, why is NASA still so invested in the Starliner? With so many issues, so much bad publicity, and the potential risk to human lives, what's driving this continued push? As always, on Mole it comes down to one thing, follow the money. Boeing has already sunk over backslash dollar two billion into this program and reported more than backslash dollar five hundred million in losses in just the past year. They began development of the Starliner in 2014 with a backslash dollar four point two billion contract from NASA. That funding was supposed to cover development and the first six crewed flights. But so far, things haven't gone according to plan. Boeing still has a long road ahead. Before they can even think about recovering the backslash dollar two billion they've already lost they need to reach what's called the Flight 6 Milestone. It's a critical benchmark, and without achieving it, any hopes of making money or rebuilding trust are just wishful thinking. But while Boeing struggles to break even, there's another space agency that has shown the world how to make the most of a limited budget, and that's ISRO, the Indian Space Research Organization. This agency has transformed modest resources into one of the most successful space programs on the planet. ISRO has consistently done more with less turning tight budgets into opportunities. And now, they've announced not just one but two new space missions, both aiming to land on celestial bodies. The first mission is a new lunar lander, designed to follow up the success of Chandrayaan-3. The second is even more ambitious, a mission to land a craft on Mars. These announcements are bold and inspiring, especially considering ISRO's proven track record. What's impressive is that they're planning all this with cost efficiency and engineering excellence something many larger agencies still struggle to match. Let's break this down. While we said the new lunar mission will follow in the footsteps of Chandrayaan-3, technically, on the mission timeline, it will come after Chandrayaan-4. That's because Chandrayaan-3 already accomplished what no Indian spacecraft had before. It successfully landed on the moon. This historic event made India the fourth nation in the world to achieve a soft lunar landing. Naturally, the next big step for India's lunar program is sample return. That task will fall to Chandrayaan-4, which is expected to collect and return material from the moon's surface. So where does Chandrayaan-5 come in? That's where things get interesting. Even though details are still limited, what we know so far is that Chandrayaan-5 will deliver a brand new rover to the moon's surface. This rover will be larger, tougher, and more capable than the six-wheeled vehicle used during Chandrayaan-3. 
the upgrades will allow it to travel farther, survive longer, and conduct more detailed research. This signals a major evolution in India's lunar technology, showing their growing confidence and ambition in long-term lunar exploration missions. The second big mission ISRO has revealed is a Mars lander, formerly referred to as the Mars Lander Mission or MLM. This mission would mark India's very first attempt to land a spacecraft on the Martian surface. But interestingly this plan didn't begin as a lander. The Mars program actually started nearly a decade ago with the Mars Orbiter mission, also known as Mangalayan 1. That orbiter launched back in 2013 and was a resounding success, placing India into Martian orbit on their very first attempt, something even the US and Russia failed to do on their first tries. Following that, ISRO proposed a follow-up mission, Mangalayan 2, to continue India's Martian exploration efforts. However, in 2019 the agency hinted that this second mission might evolve into something more. They began exploring the possibility of including both a lander and a rover, something far more ambitious. At that stage nothing was confirmed. But then, in early 2024 ISRO officially updated the mission profile. Not only would it include a lander and a rover, but also a helicopter drone, much like NASA's Ingenuity, and a sky crane descent system similar to what was used in NASA's Curiosity and Perseverance missions. These updates completely redefined the mission. Naturally, such changes meant that the launch schedule had to shift. Originally slated for 2026, the new projected launch date was moved to 2031, giving ISRO time to develop and test these sophisticated new systems. A full year passed with these new plans in limbo, waiting for funding and political backing. But now both approvals are in place. In February 2025, the Indian Space Commission gave the green light, and just last week, the Union Cabinet followed with its final approval. The Mars Lander mission is officially on the books. With these approvals, India is now set to join an elite group. If successful, they would become only the fourth country in the world to land a craft on Mars, following the United States, the Soviet Union, and China. That would be another massive leap forward for ISRO and a huge statement of capability and independence in planetary exploration. What makes it even more impressive is how India continues to operate under relatively tight budgets while achieving what some of the world's biggest space agencies are still struggling to do. They're showing that cost efficiency and innovation can go hand in hand. Meanwhile, over in the United States, the U.S. Space Force is pushing forward with its own major plans, but in a very different direction. They've just released a comprehensive new strategy focused on integrating artificial intelligence, AI, into all areas of military space operations. The plan also emphasizes boosting AI education among Space Force personnel. According to this roadmap, AI will give Space Force members, who are officially called Guardians, access to cutting-edge technology and real-time decision-making capabilities. It's a bold move that acknowledges how fast-paced and complex modern space warfare is becoming. Now, if the idea of combining AI and space-based weapons makes you feel uneasy, you're not alone. But it's worth noting that this strategy isn't exactly new. It's actually consistent with the vision laid out by former U.S. Air Force Secretary Frank Kendall, who led both the Air Force and Space Force from 2021 until earlier this year. Kendall stressed that future military conflicts will happen at machine speed, not human speed. In his view, AI isn't just helpful. It's essential for analyzing data, generating intelligence, and responding instantly to threats that move faster than any human can react. He summed it up with a powerful quote, The future of war is highly automated, highly autonomous. The ability of the entire joint force to project power depends upon our success in space. Those aren't just words. We're already seeing signs that the battlefield in orbit is becoming more real and more complex. In fact, a very recent report revealed something extraordinary. The Space Force observed five Chinese space objects performing synchronized maneuvers, moving around each other in tight, controlled patterns. This wasn't a random event. It looked very much like dogfighting, but in space. This wasn't a drill either. According to the Vice Chief of Space Operations, these Chinese satellites were demonstrating tactical maneuvers testing how to conduct on-orbit operations involving one satellite approaching, tracking, or even potentially engaging another. This is a game-changer. It's no longer about just launching satellites, it's about using them actively and aggressively. The Vice Chief warned that China and Russia are developing space-based tools that can jam communications, blind surveillance satellites with lasers, or even grapple and drag enemy satellites to new orbits, essentially taking them out of play. He concluded with a sobering statement. This is the most complex and challenging strategic environment that we have seen in a long time, if not ever. That's a strong admission. 
It means the U.S. military now sees space not just as a new frontier, but as a potential war zone. And it underscores the urgency of building the kind of AI-driven systems that can outpace any potential threats. From India's peaceful robotic explorers to AI-enhanced military space fleets, the space race is no longer just about reaching new worlds, it's about securing them, defending them, and deciding who controls the final frontier.